What we did differently is that we started tools for early identification and early therapy guided on some degree of protocol. The early identification we know is key. We know that since uh, you know the early 2000s when Manny River published the early goal-directed therapy, and we have been trying to do that for some time. Unfortunately, there is a cognitive gap between knowing what sepsis is, what it looks like, and actually thinking about it when you have that patient in front of you. So what we did differently is we incorporated an electronic algorithm, sniffer, into the electronic medical record so that there's a pager that it's fired off to the team leader, the nurse in the ER. She alerts then the emergency department physician and at least they start to think about it. The second thing that we did differently is we use what is called a failure mode and effect analysis tool, FMEA, that is used by NASA to try to find problems in their processes. And we did that to try to identify what problems we were having, how often they were occurring, do we have any system in place to detect them? And we calculated a RPN number based on that. And then we tackled the most important uh, problems with the higher RPNs to improve care. With those uh, tools and other quality improvement tools that were used to help change the culture, <coughs> we were able to increase compliance, the all or non compliance with the seven bundle elements went from zero to 30 in 2013 and then 50% in uh, July of 2014. And uh, fortunately, when we look also at the mortality data for that year, it uh, decreased significantly. We went from the 92 hospital among 123 hospitals in the UHC database for sepsis mortality to be the number three best performing hospital. So it was a significant drop in the observed over expected mortality ratio based on those interventions. I think that the basic tools that we put out there, they're not complex. Um, you, could, you could argue that, you know, of course, we put an electronic sniffer but if you really look at healthcare nowadays, everybody has an electronic medical record. And even if your local electronic medical record cannot do the screening for you, the criteria is very simple. We're talking about five, seven things that the person doing the screening in the emergency department can do manually. And once they're identified, then they simply trigger a series of events downstream that will certainly uh, help improve the delivery of that care early on. Since the publication of the Surviving Census Campaign Guidelines in 2013, there have been three uh, large randomized control trials that have been published. A uh, process trial from the US, the ARISE trial from Australia and New Zealand, and the PROMISE trial from the United Kingdom. And what we did at my institution was to bring the local practice from where we were in 2013 to a level pretty similar to what the usual care at these three protocols was. Those uh, research you know, that they did, they essentially had somebody in the ED <coughs> doing the screening for the enrollment. So they were actively doing screening for that. So what I'm saying is that those studies look very good because somebody was looking for it. So for the general population, for all the other hospitals, we need to find a way to screen those patients early and then have a series of delineated interventions so that people can focus on them. Based on those three trials, probably we don't need to focus too much on the later, more invest invasive uh, interventions, but we can certainly focus on the main four elements of resuscitation. 
getting the blood cultures, giving antibiotics early, getting the lactate check, and giving the antibiotics. With those things in mind, I am sure that we can continue to improve the care for septic patients that come to our hospitals. I'll be very honest with you. There's clear data that if you delay sepsis resuscitation, the time is vital. The more you delay, the worse that patient outcome will be. So in my mind, particularly somebody with severe sepsis or septic shock in the ER, should be approached with the same rigorous criteria and approach as you would approach a trauma patient who is on hemorrhagic shock. They're both shock patients. They're both going to end up in organ hypoperfusion and multi-organ dysfunction unless you do the resuscitation and bring them back. So, you know, in my mind, it's really high on the priority list.